Hi. In the previous video, I went over using a Leonardo and some other eBay components to build a simple avoidance detecting robot. It read the output of an IR distance detector and then generated the needed signals to drive a dual H-bridge motor control. Collectively, this caused the car to roam the floor in a more or less random pattern. That version of the car also included an LCD's display and button set which provided an onboard method of controlling and monitoring the robot's behavior. If that was version 1 of the platform, then this video could be called version 1.5, where the new ad is an MPU 6050 gyro accelerometer chip. Adding a 6050 to a Leonardo that was already driving a display and an L298H bridge required some rethinking of how to use the available I.O. pins. The L298 breakout board in its original form needed six control signals, two for PWM throttle control and four for directional control. Reducing the directional control count was the most obvious thing to do. Luckily, the direction leads all terminated on the inputs of a 7404 hex inverter. So I jumpered the output of the N1 inverter to N2 and did the same thing for the N3 and N4 pair. That freed up two I.O. leads without having to add any additional hardware. The freed leads became D2 and D3 which could then be used to talk to the MPU over the I2C bus. The next issue I considered was what to do about the interrupt signal from the 60, that the 6050 generates when running in DMP mode. The out-of-the-box teapot demo wants to use interrupt 0, which on the Leonardo is digital pin 3, but as I just said, that was being used for I2C communications. Long story short, for this application, I decided just to forget about the interrupt and use the FIFO count register as the prime method of detecting when the MPU had something to work with. By the way, since I mentioned the teapot demo, if you're as green as I am about working with the Arduino and this MPU, you need to know that the, this demo makes use of two different development IDEs. The first is the normal Adreno IDE, and the second one, which renders the display on your computer, is something called processing. It's a totally separate IDE, and if you don't already have it, you need to Google for it, download it, and install it. Then move the PDE file that con is contained in the demo package to your documents processing directory. The two IDEs look almost identical because they share a common parent, but again, they are two different coding platforms. So if you've been scratching your head on this one, maybe this will help get you going. So here we have the teapot demo up and running on the Leonardo. If the movements of the model look jerky, it's because my computer can't keep up with both the demo and the video capture software. After the car's wiring mods were made and the teapot demo was working, it was time to start on the PID side of the code. Because the dev I2C library consumed so much of the Leonardo's programming space, I was reluctant to just do an import of the general purpose PID library. So I chose instead to take the beginner's PID code presented by Brett Beauregard, which was tied into the point and had what I needed to translate the MPU yaw readings into a usable steering signal that could algebraically be added to a common throttle value. So, at that point, I thought I had everything needed for a PMU controlled car. Turns out the fun was just beginning. <clears throat> Typically what was happened 
at this stage is I'd launch the code and the car's motors would go crazy for some moments and then more often than not settle into some kind of fixed turn. So it's pretty clear the mo with the motors in play the Leonardo was having trouble maintaining a reliable communication link with the 6050. Why that was a problem wasn't nearly as obvious. My first thought it was some kind of electrical interference. So I tried every trick in that book I could think of, including adding external pull-up resistors to the I to C lines, as well as the PWM and enable leads. I also added capacitors at various power points, and even went so far as to set up separate battery systems for the motor and logic, none of which really solved the problem. As an aside, even though the dual battery system didn't realize any tangible improvement, I've left it in place just because I like the idea that the logic side of the system can continue to operate even if the motor battery should get sucked down to zero. Eventually I tried placing 0.1 microfarad capacitors across each motor and that did yield an improvement particularly when the motors were actually running. But, as luck would have it, that wasn't the whole story. Even when the motors weren't energized, the program would eventually go off and hide, which meant to me it was picking up some kind of strange data that it didn't know how to handle. Playing with the code showed that if the PWM values weren't actually changing, the program was much more stable. Eventually, that led me to slowing the PWM frequency down on pin 13, timer 4, down to 32 hertz. And that yielded another major improvement. Still, at random times, the yaw numbers would go crazy, and later might recover when another command signal was applied. What I concluded was happening was <clears throat> that somehow the FIFO was getting out of step. So to counter that, I added code that looked at the size of the data actually retrieved, and if it didn't actually match the packet size, reset the FIFO and go back and read it again. With DMP interrupts occurring every 10 milliseconds, that's not a long wait, especially for this application. Plus, Brett's simple PID code contains compensation for varying sample time, so this change pretty much solved my troubles.